What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell as we get going. Goes a long way for us over here at the channel. It goes a long way for you, too, because you become a prize whenever some of this great betting content information is going live over at the channel. Uh, yeah, what a smash. And hey, I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, Eric, the Guardians and the Yankees, they got rained out and you didn't even get a pick from that one. Okay, well, whatever. And oh, Eric, I thought you got it wrong. You took the over of six and a half. And there was only four two. Well, guess what? If you were in the premium discord, I hit on the Kyle Tucker home run, the Jordan Alvarez home run. I talked about both of them over on the show yesterday saying Luis Castillo has a little bit of a lefty problem and going from Toppy and those other guys in Toronto to Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez is going to be a major big difference. I put a unit on each, or well, I put a half unit on Kyle Tucker, but I put a unit on Jordan Alvarez, an absolute smash. Julio Rodriguez over one and a half total bases. It was a beautiful, beautiful day to be in the Discord, uh, the premium Discord, that is something you can sign up for in the video description box below. Or if you just want to listen to me now, stochastic.com slash Lindy, and you use promo code ELINSIDER in order to sign up and be in there. I'm putting in NHL bets. I'm putting in NFL bets. And hey, NBA, that is what I believe to be my best sport. And that is coming up next Tuesday. Uh, preseason action going now. I haven't been betting a whole lot because, hey, I'm working hard for you guys trying to get you the best MLB, NHL, NFL content I possibly can over at the channel day in, day out. So uh, I had a great MLB day somehow. Yes, again, I want to be able to get you guys the winners here. And I know that I liked the over of six and a half in that game. And there were multiple opportunities by both teams to find a way to it. But still, to hit three for three in the props there was just a beautiful Beautiful day, smash fest, and we're looking to run it back here. I have one prop I'm going to throw out there for you guys uh, on this video, but if you guys want all of that, stochastic.com slash Lindy, EL Insider is the promo code, all caps, one word. So we got that. We've also got BetMGM teaming with us right now. You bet $10 on any NHL money line. You get $200 if either team scores a goal. Spoiler alert, Kings, Kraken, scored goals in the first 10 minutes of that game. Uh, that was the one that I was just like, let's find some goals there. So that felt good too. get you guys $200. If you haven't signed up at bed MGM, but I know lots of talking here at the start, but we've got three games now. Yes. Bonus baseball, considering we got guardians and Yankees moved to the early morning window on Friday. Let's get to it. Shall we? Here are the picks. You know, it'd be really funny is if I just had like completely different analysis than what I had on Thursday. Hey, you know what? I changed my mind. We're going to do something different. It's not true, though. I mean, I might not be able to pick a winning side to save my life here the last week or so, but whatever. Called the rain out yesterday. That felt pretty good. But it's literally the same matchup. Shane Bieber versus Nestor Cortez Jr. And so it's the same analysis. So if you want to just skip ahead, if you know what's coming, go ahead. Go to the next couple games because there's not much of anything that I really like here. But starting with the visiting starter, Biebs, who was sick against Tampa. Seven and two-thirds innings. Three hits, just one earned to go with eight punch out. Same thing. He's very good. Obviously, the Yankees lineup is a lot better than what Tampa Bay's lineup is. But still, Bieber has some sick reverse splits this season. That's what I talked about a lot yesterday. A 2.56 uh, XFIP against lefties on the year. That's really good. In fact, the reverse splits nature of Bieber is something I'm going to be paying attention to with this Yankees lineup again. I doubt it gets me to really pull the trigger against him. But a 28.2% K rate to go with a 2.56 XFIP against lefties is a lot better than his 22.5% K rate and 3.3 XFIP against righties. Well, he's also better in terms of average, better in terms of whip against lefties as opposed to righties. Uh, we've got Rizzo, Cabrera. Those are the two guys that I pointed out from yesterday. It still applies. I don't think Matt Carpenter makes the lineup considering some of those splits. It's not like the Yankees don't have a card that tells them the same things that I'm looking at. So I doubt you're looking at more than two lefties that show up in tomorrow's lineup. As for Cortez, starting here for the New York Yankees, he's got a 257 X Woba and a 320 expected slugging on the year and a 26.5% K rate. I like him, even though he's not a guy who throws over 92 miles per hour. Uh, that's his average fastball velocity. It's pretty wild to see a guy getting that kind of K, uh, that kind of a K rate despite that. And Cleveland, same thing I pointed out, an 84 WRC plus on the season against lefties. That's fourth worst in all of baseball. So I'm not that enthusiastic to be back in Cleveland. If you see on your screen, plus 126 doesn't feel like good enough value, but also minus 135 on the money line. Looking at the run lines, 
Nothing really looks all that good to me. And with a total of six, it looks about appropriate here. So I'm passing. Once again, nothing has changed. If I had to do something, I'm going to lean to the Yankees run line, minus one and a half, just because you're getting that plus 165 money. That's going to be the same identical number you had from Thursday that's moving to Friday. Bieber on one more day of rest, though, doesn't feel all that enticing to be going up against. So for me, there might be a prop or two that I can extrapolate in the morning tomorrow. But as it stands right now, knowing kind of what these lineups are going to look like, I am passing this game, period, end of story. Just enjoy it, and we'll move on to the afternoon. Oh, the Phillies. The Phillies, the Phillies, they missed a golden opportunity in game two. It could have been Aaron Nola here in game three. He is pitching in game three, but could have been him pitching for the series for the sweep. Instead, Zach Wheeler, a little bit of a rough sixth inning. They end up losing three, nothing, whatever. They're going back home to Philadelphia. And now is where it really begins because this is a mismatch. Aaron Nola versus Charlie Morton getting the ball and Morton with a 42.1% hard hit percentage, a 228 expected batting average is actually pretty good. And the 28% K rate, but Kyle Schwarber, Bryce Harper, one of the major issues for me looking at Charlie Morton is going to be these lefties. It looks eerily similar to what we had with Houston on Thursday, where I was looking at Alvarez and Tucker. I think these two guys at the top of the lineup are going to be the tail of the, the entire day. And if they're able to get after Charlie Morton, like I think they can, you're looking at runs right from the get-go. I bet Atlanta is going to be happy to fire up their bullpen right away here. They get the one day of rest um, on Thursday. Coming into Friday, they'll be all systems go. You're trying to find any way to win this game three. You don't want to try to bring this back to Atlanta in any way, shape, or form. Philadelphia, though, I love the Schwarber-Harper combo at the top, and I really, really, really love Aaron Nola. He's my boy. A 31.6% hard hit percentage and a 259 ex-WOBA is just nails. There are strikeouts available in this lineup. And yes, he does that really well with a 29.1% K rate, a sub 4% walk rate. Aaron Nola is the exact kind of guy you want to have with the ball in his hands in a must win type situation. And that is this game three, which means I definitely like the Philadelphia side. Now, Vegas has definitely been more apprised of this. And that's why you're seeing minus 115 for Philadelphia. If this were last year's against St. Louis on the road, we got plus money to back Nola and Wheeler. We got plus money again in Atlanta. Now, slight favorite, but still not enough for me. So it's going to make a standard unit play. I'm going to have 1.15 units on it. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. We're going to go for one unit in that afternoon game. Uh, we go from a lean to a like. Bet you know what's coming next. All right, everybody, you know what to do. You head to BetMGM. You bet $10 on any NHL money line, and you're going to get $200 free just by signing up at BetMGM if either team scores a goal. Now. In the NHL, a team has to score a goal. That's what happens. You don't have 0-0 zero, zero ties. This is not European soccer, even though I do love European soccer. And I'm looking forward to the World Cup. Going to be betting that too, because I'm a sick person. But I love myself some BetMGM. And you will too, when you sign up for their product, gets you yet access to another sports book in order to odd shop. That's the name of the game. We want to find the best lines day in, day out at any book, whether that's DraftKings, FanDuel, uh, PointsBet, a lot of the main ones that I use, and then BetMGM because they have great numbers available. Decent player prop numbers too, especially especially in the MLB street. So I want you guys to sign up, bet $10 on any NHL money line. You're going to get $200 if either team scores a goal, which they're going to do. All right, sign up for that, and let's get back to my last pick, a lock that I have for you in the last game of the night. Well, things got pretty, pretty, pretty interesting in this divisional series between NL West rivals. We've got the Dodgers. We've got the Padres. We've got game three in Petco to finish off the night. Going to be electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. We got Tony Gonsolin getting the ball for the road team against Blake Snell and the Padres. Got to let you know, though. It's going to be a bullpen game. And that usually means I want to be betting the team who's going to be utilizing their bullpen in these kind of spots. And that is going to be the Dodgers because Tony Gonsolin is not stretched out. There's no way coming off of 40 pitches in the one start he had last week that he is going to kind of jump up to 75, 80 pitches here. So you're looking at a true bullpen matchup type scenario here from the Dodgers. They have no Walker Bueller. He's out for the next year and a half, it sounds like. They have no... Uh, opportunity to go to Andrew Heaney. They have nobody in terms of a lengthened out starter that they want to be utilizing in this spot. That means Tony Gonsolin starts it off and you're going to one of the best bullpens in baseball to try to bring this home for you. 
And that helps when you talk about the San Diego lineup at the top. You play, can play matchups with Machado, try to get him up against righties every single time. Juan Soto, he's been really, I, I would say, surprisingly good in the second half of the season. A 401 X Wova is a gigantic number. A 20% walk rate is not something you see every day by a baseball player. That is part of the greatness of Juan Soto, even if it hasn't shown up in the box score in a prevalent home run type fashion, doubles in, in uh, high leverage situations. Uh, whether it was Cronenworth's home run in the eighth inning last time around uh, in game two, whether it was Manny Machado leading it off of the home run in the top of the first, Juan Soto will have his moments maybe in this series, but for sure down the line, that's going to be something the Dodgers really need to be working around this top of the lineup. So I'm going to be paying attention to some of these bullpen arms, but they look pretty good and are grading out well. As for Blake Snell starting on the other side, a 279 X Woba is awesome. A 32% K rate is about as damn good as it gets. But the walks and the hard hit, we'll see. If he is avoiding the walks, you could be in for a long night for the Dodgers, but I doubt it. And I love the bullpen arms. And I love everything about this Dodger team with the back against the wall in game three, which brings me to a lock play. We are locking in the money line. There's no way the Dodgers, World Series champions of 2020, are going to go down without a fight here in this side. And I love bullpen games in general. I think they've been a big, big advantage on the books over the course of the last year, year and a half, especially as starters became more of a prevalent thing. People don't want to dig into bullpens all that deep, and it doesn't seem like books do either. I think the Dodgers should be even bigger than minus 120 favorites here. I would bet them up to minus 135, minus 140. So I'm getting short of minus 120 to be able to bet them here. That becomes my favorite bet on an outright of the night. Now, I said I was going to give you a prop. So here you go. Trace Thompson. He is going yard. He's just going yard. That's just the end of the story. I keep bringing out these home run props, and it's amazing at the clip that I've been hitting these. I hit three or four solo home runs on Wednesday, all Dodgers. I bet four Dodgers. Uh, thanks, Cody Bellinger, for joining the party, but you didn't. And I went two for two today with Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez. And Trace Thompson, with a 47.2% hard hit percentage and a 498 expected slugging at the back of this Dodgers order, is going yard in Petco, looking at a couple of the numbers for him against lefties. He is just electric, and he's going to have plus 450 and, and greater value at a number of books. I think he gets a lot of those at-bats. Uh, he's for sure going to face Blake Snell twice. Uh, he might get pinch hit for later for a Gallo or a Bellinger later in the game. But as it stands right now, y'all, Thompson's going yard, and the Dodgers are winning this baseball game. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Head to that video description box below. Let me know how much you made on those player props. I did see a couple of amazing screenshots on the Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez combination single game parlay. Almost plus, uh, almost 20 to 1, plus 2,000 money going in on that. Love to see it. Hit up those screenshots to me over at Eric Lindquist. I love to retweet those. Love to see your successes, and especially... You know, if we can get one of these outrights to go across the board here uh, throughout the playoffs, that'd be great. I mean, Philadelphia was two freebies in St. Louis. Hopefully we can get back on track on Friday. But until next week, uh, I'm going to have Aton here over the weekend. Uh, looking forward to his analysis. Hopefully you guys are too. He's there in Philadelphia, so maybe give him a shout out on his Phillies baseball team. It's going to be an exciting, exciting weekend. So until Monday, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Friday.